went to school and being a pupil today they are called learners often that they appeal the union who himself comes from alexander and he describes define and shapes the man that i am gives me courage at 17 to look at the most beautiful woman in the world miss susan to say to her will you marry me and she says yes 24th of August, we've been happily married for 41 years. I look at her now and I say, when you said this, what were you smoking? Because I had nothing, <laughs> I was nothing, I didn't even have potential. Sanwarani, thank you very much for joining us for another episode of Men360 a man lifestyle podcast that seeks to teach and teach and reteach if Mela on that but this is a platform where men can learn honestly from other men but not only men but also women who are leading in different aspects of society and also to take stock from ourselves our colleagues our friends and families on how we can do better to build society but also to be a holistic man and today, of course, we are joined by one of the people that I hold quite dear, a good and great father, a leader of society, somebody that I look up to, Ndade Bonang Mohale. Others know him as Prof Bonang Mohale. I will allow him to introduce himself more, but this is a man that every time I think of fatherhood, I think about ethical leadership, is one of the first names that click in my mind. Ndade Mohale, really book. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and thank you so much for having me. No, thank you very much for making time. I know you're quite a busy man and we really appreciate this opportunity to just have a conversation with you. Most importantly about leadership, but uh, of course, looking into this animal called a man. Ndade mohale kimang. Bonang mohale kimang. Ereke kale ka ulebu wa munyetla. Yeah, and that and express a profound sense of gratitude for the opportunity just to have a conversation because man's greatest accomplishment is through mm. talking sure and man's greatest failure is through not talking ah so when i start maybe to just to acknowledge that a dear friend of ours that day dear homo seneca has mm. just been called to a higher order through an accident and I'm sitting here absolutely bleeding sure. because you are such a phenomenal, a good mm. quality human being, sure. a comrade, a friend, a business leader mm. and a struggle activist. Mm. So as I'm speaking to you, we don't know the funeral details yes, yes. so that we can go yes, and that. It's always nice uh, to pay respect where yeah, it is that's truly deserved. Nabi Zolaka Kibonan Mohal. Kimukunamuko did. Kimuhudzono Mohulu, Sohashakam Pafat, Quenajer Lil Sabatikam Koko. But I was brought up to be a township boy. Mm -hmm. And I was truly blessed with some amazing opportunities. I got married when I was 17. Uh -huh. which means I needed my parents' consent uh, to get married. That defined uh, who I am and what I would eventually become, giving expression to this notion that I am not what happened to me, mm. but what I choose to become. Mm. Where I am now, I'm in an incredibly good headspace because I took an early retirement at age 55. Uh -huh. I mean, who gets an opportunity yes. to do that? And I now do only the things that I want to do mm -hmm. and be only with the people that I want to be with. Yes. So some of the things that I do now to start where I am and then we can retrace it back is I am the chancellor of the University of the Free State. Sure. I'm a professor of practice at the Johannesburg Business School mm -hmm. where I try and teach when I'm given an opportunity to in the faculty of business and economics. Mm -hmm. At Gibbs with Professor B, uh, Nick Binadel, we have an opportunity to talk to global MBA students mm -hmm. on strategy 
and ethics. Mm -hmm. And then I chair the three boards um, of two of them are listed entities, the Bidwas Group Limited mm -hmm. and Arcelomita, mm -hmm. but also SBV Services, mm -hmm. the Cash in Transit people. Cash transit. Somewhere in between, I still make time to be the president of Business Unity South, South Africa. Africa. This is the apex organization, yes. not of individual companies, mm -hmm. but of 67 other organizations. Mm. Um, the only one that is constitutionally mandated to sit at NEDLEC. Mm -hmm. And the one that really speaks on behalf of the totality of business, whether it's big business or small business, mm. white business or black, black business, business. Um, formal business or not so formal business. So they give me joy, meaning and purpose. And when I sum it all up, I say, is it possible that I can be the reason that somebody feels needed and wanted, mm. heard, loved, and supported. Mm. And if I can do those, uh, then I have really made myself useful for the very first time in my life. <laughs> well, that was powerful, Levona. That was quite profound. Um, and I think I should say that I've always um, admired um, how you um, narrate and tell stories. Uh, if uh, I think not even if I think uh, radio so stories are no longer popular on radio, but uh, if they were that popular, I think we would be all saying, the table you know, uh, to be that narrator of stories because you have that ability to capture you know somebody's attention um, and and be able to hear you from the heart, you know. I'm told that you are born in Benoni and. You are born in the days of apartheid. Um, please just take us through that. You are born of men that day. Um, how is the household? How is the community? And how do you navigate yourself in those streets? So to start that conversation, I want to remember your face. So that when I meet you in heaven, mm. I'll be able to recognize you and thank you again. Mm. These authentically simple words, but profoundly gravid with meaning, mm -hmm. are spoken by a little girl mm. who's just received a wheelchair as one of 200 mm. from Nigeria's billionaire, Femi Otedole. Mm. As Femi Otedole wants to leave, the young girl clutches onto his legs. Mm. He looks down and he says, is there anything more I can do for you my little girl. Mm. And this young lady looks up and utters these truly meaningful words. Sure. And by so doing, gives Femi or Tedolo real joy. Mm. But absolute happiness for the first time in his life. Mm. Is it possible that as we navigate our own life stories, as we traverse our own journeys, that we can touch another human being in a meaningful way uh, so that we can introduce this notion of transformative philanthropy to give in a manner that transforms both society but also the philanthropist mm -hmm. because we give in many ways mm -hmm. some people give money mm -hmm. and my grandmother used to say when you give money you give a lot but when you give time you give much mm -hmm. but if you give of yourself you give everything, everything. So I want to have an opportunity to give of myself to young African men in the townships, mm. especially in those marginalized communities of Alexander, of Orijifa, mm. of Katleho, of Emon Longkandla, Langa Gugulitu, mm. so that they can see a role model. Sure. To be able to touch somebody who says, I've tried my best. Mm. To be in the presence of dignified greatness from the black pool of excellence. Sure. So that, to me, it's an epitome of my little life mm. born in Binoni. Mm -hmm. And maybe as a six-year-old, then the family is forcibly removed from what is now called rain sweat. Mm -hmm. 
uh, to go to to Katleho. Um, and and that's where I opened my eyes, went to school, and ultimately I end up being a pupil. Today they are called learners. Often that daily appeal at Daunyan, who himself comes from Alexander, and he describes, defines, and shapes the man that I am. Gives me courage at 17 to look at the most beautiful woman in the world, Miss Susan, to say to her, will you marry me? And she says yes. 24th of August, we've been happily married for 41 years. I look at her now and I say, when you said yes, what were you smoking? Because I had nothing, <laughs> I was nothing, I didn't even have potential. This is the best decision I've ever made in my entire life. Like a typical township boy, I went to Mohobeng Primary School. Mabuchika was the school principal. I went to Reahile Primary School. Um, and there I got Kikopanalinta Tepaki, who's the school principal. Mm -hmm. And then I go to K1, Gatlehong Senior Secondary School. called High School now. That's where I meet this amazing man, and Tatili Epile Daoyan. So I fast forward, I end up at VET um, Medical School. Mm -hmm. And because of Group Areas Act, VET is classified a white, white. University. university. We can stay on campus because they will be breaking the law. Mm. So they tell us. So they find accommodation for us in Soweto, inside what was then Parakwanath Hospital. Mm -hmm. And we are cutted every morning, one hour, to come here, Bramford, mm -hmm. and then in the afternoon, every hour. I'm already disadvantaged, mm. a product of Bantu education. Every day, I lose two hours. Mm. My white compatriots, um, use that hour, those two hours a day, every day, to continue to be ahead of me. So I was given no chance. Or to settle. Um, yes. You know, go, go, I was, so in the morning I drop off my daughter, so one time the teacher just sort of to just cut you. So he says, no, um, please make sure that the child is here at 10 past seven, because they still need to settle. If they arrive late at quarter past or twenty past seven, they become uneasy and irritated. So now they still have to, you know, uh, uh, adapt to the environment. I was like, guys, ten, fifteen, but no, 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 kids have got to settle. And I, I never understood the psychology of having to arrive well on time, put your bags take what is needed for the day and you then join your peers you know so i'm, I'm actually uh, touching on this because of you saying your 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 peers at that time would have settled in campus while you're still trying to navigate into the campus and like likelihood you'll arrive late and uneasily so you must then find your lectures trace your lectures and you'll find them relaxed you know you've hit the nail on the head Absolutely. But it's worse than that. Mm -hmm. There's a component around settling. There's also a component about saying, out of 222 working days in a year, mm -hmm. so for us, that's school days. Mm -hmm. If you take two hours a day, every day, out of that, you actually lose four months of the year. And yet you are still expected to perform mm. like these kids. Mm. It gets even more intriguing when you are now taken from here because the bus leaves at five to take you to glenn thomas house mm -hmm. you reach there at six you are famished you eat by the time you settle and you start reading it's eight o'clock mm. these co colleagues of yours went to the canteen and had a sandwich now they go to the library at the university. Yes, yes, to they have access to it. Even if you wanted to go to the library, there is no transport from the modern day Chris and mm -hmm. Hospital to bring you back here. So you are double disadvantaged. But here's the story, the nub of it. Because it's a white university, you now have to apply to the Minister of Interior mm. for special permission to study at a white university. Mm. I wanted to study medicine. Because the government was saying, no, 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 there is your own black university yes, where you can say, it's called the University of Natal Wentworth Black Section. Mm -hmm. Or, in fact, we have built you your own exclusively black called the Medical University Medical. of, of Southern Africa, Africa. Yes. Medunes, just for black people. Mm. But the most amazing thing, you know, even if you come from the township and you have nothing, 
the good Lord still gives you some, some confidence. I was sure that I could compete with absolutely the best. Mm -hmm. So to fast forward quickly, my own ministerial consent, special ministerial consent, comes in April. 27 of us applied to do medicine here at VETS. And the minister says, yes, only to 11. Now I look at the ones that have been denied access in April. Mm -hmm. All the universities are now closed. Mm. They can't have you at that time. Um, they had better grades than us. They had better marks. They were more diligent, much more hardworking. It heightened my already present sense of social justice. Mm -hmm. So I had no choice but to be an activist mm -hmm. because the system was against us. You see, the, guy, the die, as in dice, mm -hmm. has always been loaded against black people. Mm -hmm. The world has always recognized that before you deal with issues of social justice, you have to deal with issues of racial justice. Mm. Because the economic power patterns are already set for generations to come. You just have to be born black, the chances are you are destined for Alexander. Mm -hmm. Born white, the chances are Brian Irrespective of how hard you work or how educated you are, you are that's what you have to accept. Mm. That's why today we look back and say, thank you, Holy Sasha, Nelson Mandela, for setting us free. Because now we understand at the most profound level why our constitution is the best in the world. Mm -hmm. Not because of what's co contained in the main body of the 198 chapters of the constitution, but because of what's contained in the one page preamble mm -hmm. and the three principles on which this rests. One being this notion of a constitutional democracy. Two, social justice. Three, fundamental human rights. And the state of these human rights. Mm. Yes, freedom of speech, freedom of association, but also freedom from hunger. That's the one that's less, se less sexy. That's why today, because of the people who call themselves our leaders, I don't think they have the full appreciation of this journey and this gift. And all we have to do is to give the black man, the black boy, mm -hmm. their own boots with which they can pull themselves by their own bootstraps. Mm. So now when you start stealing from them as a black leader, when you steal from the poor, the sick, the young, mm. the infirm, and the hungry, you actually condemn them to literal death while they're still mm. alive. alive. Mm. So had we understood that, would have used our 29 years of democracy to double up, mm. to work harder. When others are studying for eight hours, we say, we need to study for 10. Mm. When others do Monday to Friday, you say, you need to come to school exactly. on Saturday because you have to love your people, mm. to lead them. I'm just narrating my life story. Mm -hmm. So I got to this, uh, after passing fourth year, I, I listened to a wonderful, good quality human being, the late Madhu Gelotinlov, Ukache, Boya Benyad. And I listened to, on my radio, I listened to this articulate black man representing the black management forum. And I say, you know, as a GP, I'll see one patient at a time. As a supervisor, maybe I have an opportunity to impact eight people at a time. Sure. And at that time, I made the decision that I want to be a manager. Look at how your life gets shaped by events. Look at how if you want something bad enough, even nature works with you in helping you to achieve it. Because you are what you consistently mm -hmm. think about. I wanted to be a success. I wanted to take my mother out of poverty because I lost my mother, my father, at the age of 17. Therefore, not having an opportunity to give expression to this African adage that says, sons learn by looking at the back of the head of their fathers. Mm. They need to role model what a father does. When you learn to drive, you say, but I saw my father drive. Mm. Now you become the first person in your own family to own a house. Mm. That's not a municipality house. That's bonded. Mm. You become the first person in your household 
to go to tertiary institution. Mm. You become the first person to drive. No wonder as you drive and you are the first person. If somebody cuts in front of you, you follow them because you want to swear to them in seven languages. <laughs> but if you saw your father's calmness, mm. you would have said, ah, let me stay back, let them cut in, they'll make an accident somewhere, at least I'll be safe. We didn't have that opportunity. Let me just end by saying, so Vets comes, I get married to Susan, now I have another human being to look after. And I get my first job at Pfizer with a P. They now make a vaccine. Mm -hmm. So I spent five glorious years there as a professional sales representative. Mm -hmm. I aced everything they put in front of me because of the fear of poverty, because I know what it is like mm. to grow poor. And then I end up at Mac Sharp and Do, an American pharmaceutical company. In the States, it's called Mac. Mm -hmm. Outside of the States, it's called MSD. And I spend another five glorious years. Uh, and I end up product management, new business development manager, export manager, to start it from scratch. They never sold a tablet outside of South Africa. Mm -hmm. They say, it's your task. You can do that have to talk to ministers to ensure ministers of health to ensure that it's registered in Zimbabwe, Zambia, mm. Malawi, Botswana, and Namibia. And then once registered, now you need to find a business partner to go help them to launch. So I was thrown in the deep end. Mm. That's why I really started by saying I've been truly, truly blessed. I addressed a conference after the hypercholesteremia conference in 1992 in Madrid uh, during the, the Olympics, the only African candidate to do so. I come back, I launch a Zoko, and then I, I get confronted by a guy I later learned to be Dr. Luther Erhard, working for Sandoz products. Mm -hmm. He says, I heard you speak in this conference. I want you to come and help me in my expo. And he gives me an opportunity to be head of department reporting directly to him to be the member of EXCO. Mm -hmm. I've spent 11 years in pharmaceuticals. Now I have an opportunity to be really at the highest policy and decision-making uh, body. How it ended up is I then get chosen to be one of 18 people in the world. Sandoz has a presence in 114 countries and locations. Mm -hmm. They decide that they are going to merge the three Swiss pharmaceutical companies. I work for Sandoz, Siba Gaigi, and Roche, their headquarters is in Isando, mm -hmm. uh, Camden Park. in Campton Park. So we put these two together, we leave um, Roche out to create a new entity called Novo Artes. Today they are called Novartis. Mm -hmm. So I'm now a midwife to this new entity, and my boss goes on to be the CEO of both entities. I have an opportunity to live for 18 months in a wonderful town called Basel in Switzerland, Switzerland, at the confluence of three countries. When I was standing on that bridge, I look forward to Germany, I'm in Switzerland and here's France, just on that bridge. Mm -hmm. If I extended my hand like this, the two hands will be in different countries. Here's a township boy from Katlewa who's now living um, really in the most sophisticated European country where the train, they don't say it leaves at 12. They say the train will depart at 11.57. And at 11.57, it departs. Yes. So really, that's, that, that's how I saw uh, my life. And I then became um, an executive. Sure. Um, Mario Abajo had hands me to be the managing director of the world's oldest and biggest elevator company called Otis. Triple two downtown Joburg. Now I have an opportunity to work in downtown Joburg to work with my uncles, my aunts, niece and nephews as the big honcho, not of Otis South Africa, but of Otis Africa, looking after 33 of the then 53 African countries. Country. Today, we talk about this continent that has 1.3 billion people, 55 countries. They speak more than 3,000 languages mm -hmm. with a continental GDP of 3.42 trillion uh, US dollars. Yes, the the biggest US. being Nigeria, the second being Egypt, we are now the third. 488 billion US dollars, 358 billion, we are 350 billion. But yet in 2010, we're the biggest, the most complicated. Because Nigeria, it's a single commodity market. Mm -hmm. So honestly, having a conversation with men, I end this part by saying, allow nature to work with you. Yes, plan. But sometimes it's okay to take a detour. Mm -hmm. Because nature knows 
Please when understand. it wants to tell you to slow down in winter. That's why snakes hibernate. That's why bears go into the hole. Because the body tells you, I want to slow down. Mm -hmm. As human beings, no, we want to cheat nature. In winter, we still want to start at 7 until 5. We don't have an opportunity to build our own internal hot water bottle. Mm. Because the body will tell you what foods you crave for. Amadumbe, dumbling, and oxtail. <laughs> Not seared salmon yeah. with a salad. You can't eat strawberries when they're out of season. Sure. Because they're imported. Because when they're imported, they spend six weeks on the ship. By the time you eat them, they look nice, glorious, and rosy and succulent. But they've lost half their nutrients. That's why nature says, I'll give you apricots when you need them. I'll give you millies when you need it. So if you listen to nature, you are in tune with nature, you'll be guided, yes, by your cop, but you'll also be guided by your heart. That's what we forget. Women do this better than us. They call it intuition. We just trudge along day and night. We don't because at night the body tells you go to bed. During the day, when the sun shines, it says it's time to wake up, and we want to turn it around. Humans are funny beings. Kareem <laughs> Hale, you speak about um, losing your father at seventeen. Maybe let's start with how was your relationship with your father um, growing up and what then becomes your mind space at, the, at, at his parting time? So I'm one of very few who have both a mother and a father when I grew up. Mm. But funny enough, everything I know today I was taught by my mother, not by my father. My mother taught me how to clean the stoop mm -hmm. and to make fire on a welcome Dover stove mm -hmm. of coal and wood. She taught me how to plant millis, but she also taught me how to plaster a wall of a house and put the glass stone and paint because that's what we do preparing for every Christmas. Mm -hmm. Like most kids, my father was very soft-spoken. Hardly said much, go to work and come back. The most entrepreneur and enterprise by definition was actually my mother, mm -hmm. who was a hustler and made plans. And as a result, 90% of who I am today, funny enough, I got from mom, not from dad. I love my dad to bits. Mm -hmm. And maybe the excuse is that he was working hard and sometimes we don't realize that we're absentee fathers. Mm -hmm. Here's what I missed from my father. I've never heard my father say to my mother, I love you. Mm -hmm. Because in the township at that time, the understanding was, if I'm still here and I'm with you, it's because I love you. Mm -hmm. I don't have to tell you. So this I love you, I love you every second. Maybe it's not our culture. Uh -huh. And as a result, now I overcompensate. Uh -huh. With Susan, every opportunity I have, even when I get to the office, I say I arrived safely at the office, I always end by, and I love you very much. Because I never got it. Not that I missed it. Mm -hmm. I don't talk to my two daughters. Without saying my sweetheart, my angel, and end that conversation by saying I love you. Mm -hmm. So that they know, they don't have to second guess. Mm -hmm. I knew that my father loved me but it would have been nice now in hindsight to hear him say, say i love you uh, to my mom so i never heard that let alone him say to me but i love you when i went to get an award in metric now they go, call it grade 12, grade 12 yes. and i was on stage he stood up when everybody was sitting and said that's, that's my boy, boy. Uh, that's his suit so that was his way of expressing love mm. now i write a whatsapp to my daughters and say, I haven't seen you in a week just to let you know that I love you. There is no other reason other than to say, I love you. After a month, if I haven't seen one and say, I miss you. Can we have do coffee at mm -hmm. the restaurant of your choice? <laughs> yeah. Because I care. So to, to recognize your duty as a father, to say you are the head of the household, mm -hmm. comma, the same way that Christ is the head of the church. Ah. To serve, not to bellow out instruction, mm. 
not to be given food, but to say, lead us. Because you are the leader of your household. Mm -hmm. It lasts. Not what our fathers did. The whole chicken mm -hmm. comes. He eats when he's had his feel. Says some coscas. Now, and the bones. <laughs> Leadership is about saying, let my family eat first. Mm. Because even the Bible tells us that. First Timothy 5 says, a man that can look after his, his own, own family, family. Ah. is worse than an unbelief. Yes. Now we know that. Mm -hmm. But I just did it instinctively. Because I was so young when I got married to Susan. So I had to figure out where, where I'm going to put this queen. That's a mm -hmm. My queen. Now you can't say queen and talk to her rudely. Let us, let alone say queen and put a hand on her. Mm. So the whole idea of taking boys to the mountain, it's not a circumcision school. Circumcision is a small part of what they do. Mm -hmm. A large part of it is how do we induct you mm. into manhood? It's an initiation school mm -hmm. where they also circumcise. You put the two words together, that's why it's here in Dabi. Mm -hmm. When we have umgid, we know how we are welcoming them and introducing them to society. And your fathers will always say to you, not a, a thesis, not a dissertation. They'll give you two no more than three things. They'll say to you, my boy, now that you are a man, mm. one, look after this queen like your whole life depends on mm -hmm. it. It doesn't matter how frustrated you are, you must never lay your hand on her. Mm. Number two, they'll say to you, ensure that she never goes hungry, both literally and figuratively. Mm -hmm. Goes hungry because your job is to go hunt and bring the bacon home. Mm -hmm. Go hungry because even if you're angry with her, you must talk about your problems in the kitchen mm -hmm. and solve it. Because when you go to the bedroom, if you have a bedroom, there's no war there. Mm -hmm. That's the holy ground. Yes. That's the holy space. Sure. There you cater for her every need. That's what they meant. She must not go hungry. Mm -hmm. Now you have young boys who sulk and yes. they don't talk to their partners for three months because they're sulky. <laughs> we haven't been brought up that way. So sulky happens in the kitchen. Yes. That's why even today when Susan wakes me up at two and says, Voga, Voga dot, let's talk. And I look at her and say, no, she wants to solve her problem. She says, let's talk. I don't sit up on my head rest mm -hmm. and say, okay, what do you want to talk about? I say, ah, she wants to talk. I jump out of bed and I put on my trousers. Yes. And says, no, no, no. I say, ah, Kitchen. this is not where we solve problems. Yeah. Ah. We solve problems somewhere else. Here we sleep. Mm -hmm. Here we make love. Different. Peace and love. Yes. yes. So that you can separate this. Uh -huh. So when I get into the bedroom, I'm already in a different headspace. I'm there to serve. Not to fight. Mm. War is waged somewhere else. It's small things like that that make you figure out your own purpose as a leader of the household. Mm -hmm. So the last one is then imagine if you are a good father that sets a good foundation for your daughters so that when they meet their first boyfriend they are in essence looking for you in these mm. guys so they don't take anything that moves. At two o'clock in a nightclub they don't have transport. They want to gravitate on the only guy who's got a car. Mm -hmm. They say I want to choose a guy that I really love not for convenience, mm -hmm. not for money, but because I feel something. When I'm in your presence, you make me whole. Mm -hmm. We complement each other and we supplement each other. You lose your father at 17. You marry Mesuzen at 17. Was it before or after that they passed on? It was after. after. So how do you then take dad's passing and also, what made you confirm and not be ambiguous that Yes. So part of it was fear. This woman is beautiful, intelligent, passing well. Hey, you, 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 you were all in the same school. Same school. Same, same, I was class. In our same class. And I was sitting at the same desk with her. Number one, number three. Because I know in those days, Mosangere, people wanted to, yes. you know, rankings were quite important. Exactly. Yes. And I went to primary school with her brother, ah. Vusmuzi, Charles Mshok. I didn't know 
and he was my best friend. Mm. We had lunch. I didn't know Vusi had a sister. And I meet her now in high school, and I meet her separate. I don't make the connection until I visit her for the very first time. So Vusi used to be number one, I would be number two. If I'm number one, Vusi is number two. But Susan was exactly like that. So I say, hey, but I better put the deposit yeah. so that I don't lose this queen. So that was part of that. But the other part on a more serious note is to say, now that my father has passed away, I'm from a family of seven, five girls and two boys, mm. but I'm bang in the middle. So I'm cushioned to this side, cushioned to this side, three, three. But fortunately, I'm the firstborn son. Mm. In our culture, the firstborn son is your father's equal. Mm -hmm. If your father, something happens to your father, must you step up. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I said to her, I want you to marry me so that you help me this task of mm. looking after my household as a 17 year old i don't have to discharge on my own mm. but secondly i said to the ones that come behind me we are fatherless now but you have our mother mm. the matriarch so here's my commitment to you you'll go to school until you get tired you will not stop school because you don't have shoes mm. or because of poverty i will make sure that you go as high as you want so i went to verse 1981 as a first year student and I worked in the evenings and during weekends to support these three that come after me so that they can realize their own dreams. Not fullest potential just to meet their potential. Mm. As a student. Imagine having that responsibility. It's a lot. And I have Susan this side. So when the other guys now working and they've got their first pay and they were buying BMW 318 we used to call it Kushesh. Kushesh, yes. I was thinking about a deposit for our first house. Mm. Once we're in our first house, now I'm thinking about curtains, otherwise people will see us. And then, but what if my mother comes to visit? Now finish. So I was focused. The determination, the will to succeed was truly extraordinary. Mm. And as a result, I have my first bonded house in the early 20s. Fortunately, even it drives me at work. Mm -hmm. In my mid 20s, I become MD of OT's elevators, mm -hmm. not in my 30s. I think I was 28 or 29. Mm -hmm. And I ascribe all of it for having Susan as an important and critical part of my life. But those days, uh, Lobola was not a child's play. The demo so, because dead is no more. Because I'm told that uh, back then, your dad would you know, assist because of the family needed to own up to a daughter-in-law. So how then do you come up with a uh, deposit yellow ball or paid cash yes. contact? Exactly. <laughs> My uncles don't like me up until today because of that act. <laughs> I love them to be. <laughs> so now I decide, Susan says, yes, I, I told my father before he passed away to say, mm. I want to get married. Three weeks later, he said, okay, I'll support you. Um, my mother, he passed away. He hasn't told my mother. Ooh, probably. Because my mother, my, my mother, whatever she had close to her at that time, if you did something she didn't like, she'll throw it at you. <laughs> Whether it's the towel that washes dishes mm -hmm. on you, she didn't care. So I, I was quite afraid. So it took me some time to gather enough courage to tell my mother this. Mm. Cut a long story short, my mother ultimately gets it, but she blew the roof. I mean, mm -hmm. no, no, where's the ceiling? <laughs> Um, and then she says, okay, we'll talk to your uncles. That weekend, the uncles come. So three of them come. So it was a spokesperson. <laughs> yes. So as they were deliberating, it's a five-room house, 1403, and I said, no, I'll go outside. And unfortunately for me, I take a bank stool, you know, because that's what we do. Yes. And I say, I'll sit following the sun. As I'm sitting, the window was okay. above me. So I can hear them saying, they say, no, this boy is mad. I mean, he, what does he know about marriage? Yeah. He said, no, we must ask him money that is impossible for him <laughs> to afford so that he, for, he forgets about this thing. So they call me after their deliberation. They say, okay, now we will write them a letter and tell them we are coming, but we can't go empty handed. Mm. So you must give us something to show our seriousness. So I overheard the conversation. So I act dumb. So I say, so what will be that something? They say, you must give us 10,000. So at that time, some of my friends had gotten married and had done my homework. The average was about 3,000. Mm. So that's what I'd budgeted for. So he says 10,000. I remember the conversation. Okay. I said, 10,000. He says, so 
do you want it now or after you've come? They said, no, we want it now. Because they want in their mind yes. to get Had this silly short. idea yes. out of my head. So we had one bedroom for boys and one bedroom for girls. girls. In fact, I'm lying. One bedroom for mom and dad, one bedroom for girls. girls. We slept wherever, dining kitchen, room. dining room, etc. <laughs> so, but there was this bedroom where I bought, you know, those crossed steel cabinets mm -hmm. that you see at school yes. when you open bits and a lot of noise. And I went to that and I brought cash and said to them in the dining room, and I'll count 1,000 and give it to it's the papa. I I'll count to that. <laughs> and we count it and give it to that other. It was 10,000 in cash. I mean, their jaws dropped. At 16, 17, I'm 17. I gave them 10,000 cash. These are the 80s. 70s or 80s? 1979. Sure. Okay. No so idea. my jaw dropped. Their jaw drops, And I can see. So their response, silence for some time. Pete looks at me and says, <laughs> you know, yes. I say, why? He says, no, man, you're supposed to negotiate. Eh. Yes, negotiate us down. Etc. So he gives us to care, cash. <laughs> and he became my favorite uncle since yeah. then. So my blessing was at standard four, because I could see that my mother was trying, selling sorghum beer, mm -hmm. pony, etc. I bought my first camera. Halina 1000 mm. was our school to take photographs. The total cost of taking photographs was 50 cents per photograph. Mm. So in taking photographs at school, I would say deposit is 50 cents. Okay. I would accumulate this, take it to Frips. It took seven days to develop. Okay. Seven days later, when I give them another 36 spool of film, mm -hmm. I get this one. And then as I give it to them, they give me 50 cents. That 50 cents, now I now know later, that was my margin. Perfect. But I was done. So I started putting something aside. Mm. That's where the 10,000 came okay. from. But to show how amazing when you start small, what you can achieve. When I was in standard eight, I write standard eight, is the first external exam. Yes. I also took a course in photography through the Institute of Photography in Pretoria. I passed my standard eight, which was called JC and I passed my photography. Nothing. So here you do portraiture, developing, printing, processing, dark room. I did all of that mm -hmm. whilst I was still studying. But I had five cameras. I remember this oh. one when I bought the Nikon F3. When I bought the Nikon F3, the body alone without the lens was the same price of a BMW 318i. Same price. Mm. Since then, I had a Pentax. Yeah, the team will a, understand. Yes, this, uh, I had a Canon AE1. I had five of these things. So I didn't realize that, actually, if I put two, three of them together, there's the price of the house. Because mm -hmm. I would buy them as I was going. Alina yeah. thousand. Now I've really graduated. Um, but it, it was that um, that allowed me to give them 10,000. In the meantime, what I used to do, is as I take these two, because I live in Katlehu, mm -hmm. but to develop them in Germiston, the train takes you to Zimban. Mm -hmm. When I get to town, drop the films, I'll buy a box of apples, Granny Smith. As I get into the train the, with a full box, I'll take the top box, put it at the bottom, okay. those purple uh, covers, yes. because each had a cover, mm -hmm. especially wrap, and <laughs> I'll sell apples. In the train, coming back from that, and then it became a habit. Going, I'm selling apples. Coming back, I'm selling apples. Ah. Here I've got photographs. So I didn't even know the word entrepreneur, but I was quite entrepreneurial. I would buy oranges. Oranges was my favorite because you did nothing, no effort. You took a sack of oranges. You remember it was orange. Mm. You hung it outside your yard. Mm. That let his fence. Yes. If somebody wants oranges, they pick up a stone. They throw it on the roof. <laughs> you come out half naked yes. because you were just washing. <laughs> In a basin, and you give them one or uh, they pay you. It sold itself. Yes. Yeah. So I was selling orange. I was selling apples. But primarily, I was a photographer. I was a photographer. I'm still a keen photographer today. Today, I've got a Nikon D800. Mm. Do you guys the, know it? Yeah. The body. That's the best of the best. Yeah. The body was two hundred thousand. The body alone. I use a telematic lens because I'm a, a nature lover. Mm. The lens. 
was 80,000. Sure. It's amazing. You follow your passion mm. and the sense will take care of themselves. Um, so that's how I was able to give them this 10,000. When my uncle, each time he sees me, says, you have to buy me, um, it was called Viceroy, Brandy. Yes. And it, and it down. Yes. 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 <laughs> but it's so, even if it's a wedding, not at our, a family Somewhere wedding. Else, when yes. he says, uh, my bottle Bottle of and I'll go and buy Viceroy from a bottle of Yeah, and give it to him. <laughs> and then we'll heat and it. When he's really a little bit and he's got enough courage, he says, but you know, ukilar <laughs> tell Yeah. Like, and he would remind me. Honestly. Thank, thank you, my brother. And, 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 um, okay, earlier on you did say uh, what made you, you, you spoke about jokingly that you didn't want uh, people to take messes in. Yes, yes. yes. Um, but, but they've been devastated. <laughs> But also, besides Hoshapagastina, but in your heart of hearts, what also drove you to her? Because I've, I've seen you in two, three business engagement, and whenever you introduce yourself, when you talk about Mesuzen and, and you say, I always ask you to take a person like myself. I always see how your, your, your face lights up yeah. and your eyes, you know, because I think it comes from, you know, deep in your heart. H how did you get that assurance because also many young men like myself and the crew here you know we we still want that show how, how do i say i've really put my finger on it this is the one yes so even as i'm talking about her now my heart is pumping your, your face tells me yes and and when i think of her and i look at myself in in the mirror i can see my eyes light up really when i'm in a presence i'm fulfilled you see, we mustn't overthink it. We think with our head. We fall in love with our heart. The heart knows. That's why when I started, I say, let's be in tune with nature. Mm. When you are in the presence of somebody you love, you even lose your appetite. Food is a waste of time. Once you have seen the one that you think is the one, you, you stand by the window and you watch. When she goes to the shop, you find an excuse to follow her. Mm -hmm. When she comes, you drop something uh, so that she can help, or you bump into her by, by accident. If you want something bad enough, nature will work with you in helping you to accomplish it. Put differently, the good Lord can't give you a bed that is so heavy without mm -hmm. giving the commensurate strength to be able to carry it. Mm. It's like saying, he ain't heavy. He's my brother. Because if it's your responsibility, you'll be given the means to be able to do it. So, 17, a lot of people would say, I got married young, therefore I've got an excuse to divorce because I didn't really know what I was doing. With each passing day, I'm indebted to her mm. that she stayed with me throughout all these years. She hasn't traded me in for a younger, <laughs> cleverer, wealthier, much more hardworking young man. <laughs> so, Honestly, it's one of those things that you just have to ha trust your heart. And, and, and I really mean it. When you, when you leave it to nature, nature will not mm. disappoint you.